Hello there guys, uh, Mike from the Brotherhood here with Mr. Alithia Yo Will Lucas with his top 64 debt profile. He's done really really well. Um, really happy for him as well. So we're gonna go through all this and let's see. Right, you ready? Yep, let's get into it. So um yeah, I had a lot of fun this weekend, so uh, I'll just go straight into the depth profile to show you guys because you're probably all waiting. So starting us off, we have three Bandful Artemis. Now this obviously makes sense um, because 100%. it's one of the main cards that you need. And often than not, I actually sided out one or two depending on, um, I'll get to my side deck in a bit, but it kind of depended what I was um, playing. Uh, with Card of Demise as well, you don't want to draw multiple monsters you can't normal summon. Um, and a few times I did that, so I had to like discard the, the Artemis. But um, it was really good, obviously. The, one of the games I had three on the field and I activated one card trap and draw, draw, draw. It's just so good. Uh, important thing to note, you can't strike this effect because it's a continuous. Um, it doesn't activate, it's just an instant draw. So um, yeah, so the three were good. It wouldn't change that because it's counter fairies. Next up, this card is broken. <laughs> This card single-handedly won me games, full stop. I could, yeah. I could just open up with this and counter traps and win a game. Um, on the stream, I think I would have had to take or pay about 10,000 life points, um, but because of Guiding Ariadne, it didn't happen. People were so scared of this card simply because um, they didn't want to destroy it, so I got my free pop, uh, got my free searches, but they didn't like the fact it was there. Only two people in the whole day actually got rid of it, um, and I didn't profit from it, didn't get it back. So uh, there, were, there were just some pretty disgusting plays. Uh, even plays. on stream, you know what I mean? Free on, warnings on, on and stream, everything. Free yeah. warnings, free providence, everything. So. Yeah, no, it's actually amazing. Just right. wa watching this guy throughout the weekend, that card just did so much work. So much work. It's kind of so, so brutal. Much work. So brutal. Um, so we'll go on to the. Uh, Pendulum engine. So one luster, it it goes with Ariadne. You play it. You, if you open up these two, it's kind of ridiculous. On the stream, I got this off Pot of Duality and basically turned the game around. Yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously that's it's just amazing, and obviously uh, you keep going through them so you can then pendulum them back out, um, and you know that you're just applying pressure at that point. Um, the other pendulums that I played were Master and Lecter. Why Lecter now? Lecter is because it's a uh, scale 5, whereas all the Bountifuls are, uh, sorry not Bountifuls, all of the uh, Adnes are scale 3 and Vector is a scale 3, I believe. I can't so remember. just to make sure you can get the utility of it's, Yeah, it's basically to make sure. However, I actually ended up siding out the whole engine apart from Luster and Ariadnes most game twos because it, it's if if you've gone first and you get the Draco face off or anything like that it's great but if you don't go in seconds with it it just gives your opponent a better chance to yeah, stop yeah. the Draco face off um, you want to make sure you can get a normal summon off correctly and drawing these and plugging up your uh, pendulum scales is actually a bit of a problem so I sided them out honestly I don't know if I'm actually in the revised build going to keep these in um, I don't know if I like the Draco face off um, version I, I need to do more testing even though I've just done a stupid amount this weekend um, obviously luster ain't going anywhere unless it's hit on a list um, but yeah I'm, I'm unsure about these but they, they still put in work um, the annoying thing about this I went against uh, Demise Klee didn't know what he was playing Draco face off put it in the pension zone and he summoned the Klee monster I was like oh I've just negated your effects no <laughs> so that was pretty disgusting still beat him though so um, yeah so those two they're all right throughout the weekend but we'll see uh, two eccentric large fiends card's amazing like it's 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 a replacement for my MSTs I side MSTs but this card's really good um, scale seven as well really helps you can never pendulum summon it out because the lowest you've got is four and the highest you've got is uh, five normally and seven with this so these so just stay there. So two is the right amount you think as well? Two is the right amount, I don't think anything more. If you really want back row destruction you use MSTs. Twin okay. Twister isn't good, you want to keep your hand, you want to keep the advantage up. Um, Eccentrics, you can really side a third if you really want, but the problem is, if you demise into multiples, you're going to start clogging yourself. Um, there was one play that I did, which is really horrible, because I kind of minus, but um, I ended up drawing um, Eccentric and like back row, and I, 
I clogged up my I clogged up my pendulum zone and drew into a luster, and I had to use Arch um, Eccentric to pop my own strike just to be able to get the luster off. Oh, but I ended up having three Providence and won the game because of that, because I, I made him search it. So, um, yeah, so they're really good, wouldn't change them at all. all right. Um, bit of an interesting one, went for a bit of stun. Two Fossil Diner. Now, this was the night before, uh, the Friday night, about two o'clock. Oh, lovely first day. Two o'clock in the morning. This was, this was a decision, maybe one o'clock or two o'clock. Um, actually, it didn't really work that well. It, it won some games, and I thought I was um, battering a XZ Monarch player because I had this. Turns out he couldn't special summon, so because he had nothing to special summon with, so it wasn't affecting him in any way, shape, or form. Um, but the, the Dine is actually really good because you can stun your opponent in the fact that if they don't know you're playing it, you set it. And an XZ Monarch player did go off, pop my back row, um, thinking he was safe, and the Dine got flipped and I cleared three monsters on his board. So um, after that, I ended up. I did scummy move. I top deck demise and won. Um, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, that, that's the theme of this weekend. Um, so yeah, so they're really good. If I would, would I main them? No. Um, what would you replace for it? I don't know. I still need to. It's either that or banish you. I want something that stuns. Okay. Um, so yeah. So just be a bit more of like. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll need to see. It depends when I take out the Draco engine as well. It depends what I'm going to do with that. Um, but yeah, so that's however many monsters. Going on to the spells, M, V, P. This card, every time I resolved uh, Card of Demise, well, put it this way, every time I didn't resolve Card of Demise, I lost. Every time I won it, I think only two games that I resolved Card of Demise, I didn't win in the whole tournament. I think we realised this card cannot stay at three. This card is broken! We want it to stay at three, but we can't. <coughs> I want stay it to at stay three. at three, because if this card goes to one or nothing, the deck's dead, unless, uh, un until we get um, Ties of the Brethren. So, Card of Demise is just insane. The amount of times I just ripped it was insane. I've witnessed a few of those times. But yeah, <laughs> you saw it on the stream if you watched it. I ripped it on that. Um, against a Khalid, no, uh, Xeen Monarch player in the last round of Swiss. Um, I had Ariadne out, I drew into this. I drew Providence, Chaos Trap Hole, and... Uh, Providence, Kess, Trap Hall, and something else. Oh, Masco Strict. Oh, Kersiel, yeah, for the answers to everything. Um, and he just instantly scooped game three. Yeah. So this card is dumb, should never have been printed, and I love it. <laughs> but yeah, this card, don't play, don't, if you want to play this deck, you have to play these. There is no other way. Unless you run like a Sanctuary version, you still need to run them, because you will not get the speed and the regeneration power that you get from anything else. More searching power, we have pot duality. Drawing these is insane. The, the oh, deck so thinning good. is just so good. And the amount of times I would either activate this to get this or activate this to draw this, broken. Um, do not need to say anything about them. They speak for themselves. They win you games. Super awesome tech. Oh my god. The oh my god. The one card to rule them all. That's yep. all I'm saying. Mage Power won me a total of four games and allowed me to OTK a Burning Abyss, um, Burning, uh, PK Fire player. How um, important is it to you? This card is just made me gassed. I love it. Um, the, fact, the fact that... Perfect example, you can apply so much pressure. The problem this deck has, when your opponent puts out an established board, you have low, effect, you have low attack. Um, being with the Bountiful being 1-6 and Ariadne being 1-7. Um, apart from the Lectors, they're, they're really low attack. Um, so with Mage Power, it just allowed me to put a lot of pressure on. The best one was probably OTKing someone with it, and because he gave me a Kaiju, so I equipped it and it went up to like 7k, or something ridiculous. Um, and the best one was a Demise Clue player. I pendulum summoned two, he had four back row, pendulum summoned two Ariadne, so he let it go. I had five back row and two pendulums, activated it, went to 5-2, attacked, he mirror forced a Providence for game. And I attacked over the scout in attack position. And he only Literally, had two that was life. for 5-1, I believe, as well, so yeah. It was, it, yeah, it was broken. So uh, Mage Power is amazing. The idea is just simply you want some support and you can protect this with all your other stuff. Um, so yeah, I really do love it and I will never change that. 
Same difference, Moon Mirror Shield. I was very mean with this with a Banisher and a Moon Mirror Shield against Monarchs. That wasn't very nice. Um, but yeah, this card's great again, so it's it's the same same still concept. One of the both still? Um, one of the both maybe, I don't know, I think I might have to bump some of them up. Maybe Mage Power to do, just because of how brutal it is. Just to be a bit more of a troll. <laughs> just so I can do double Mage Power with back row. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was great. Uh, one up start, a bit of consistency, sided out sometimes if I, mean, I needed space. Same as Demire, same as Pog. Same Pog. Draco face off, again, spoke about that earlier, may or may not take this out. Didn't get luster with this effect once and I activated it four times in the whole tournament. Um, so yeah, I was pretty unlucky with that. Um, but yeah, as I said, may or may not take it out, I need to test a little bit more with that. Going on to the traps, and there is a oh, lot of them. The lovely part of it. How? Cards wins games. Free Solemn Judgment. Basically, yeah, or Inferno Barrier is probably the best way. Um, with Ariadne, important with this. If Ariadne is face upon your side of the field in the Pendulum Zone, you do not need to have a card in your hand to resolve the effect. Because it gets rid of the fact that there is a cost for this card. So, you just absolutely obliterate your opponent. There was one player, uh, I think it was round six, um, again, against Monarchs, and it had these three set, Ariadne and Chaos Trap Hole. And, oh no, that was Cosmo, sorry, it was Cosmo. And he, he cried once he realized that I actually had three. He thought he had, he thought he had gone through after going through this and this, and they had two sets. He summoned Tinkan, Chaos Trap pulled it, and he was just like, okay, well, I'm gonna activate e Telly. Last card in hand, Providence, and he scooped. He did that, <laughs> that one. Um, so yeah, so brutal, don't take it down from three. The new Solemn Brigade. Um, what do you say about them? They're brutal. Free, free negates for days. Don't really say too much about them. Um, this card is jokes. Oh my god, this card. I think we saw this in stream a few in times. In stream, yeah. So um, I dressed in stream, I dressed, drastic dropped off his twin twister. Um, and I had back row as well. So it was amazing. Um, this card is so underrated, especially when you combo it with Banisher. It's so underrated because they discard the card, it doesn't have to go to the graveyard. So, Drastic Drop Off is one card I will never ever take out of this deck. Simply because it's an instant draw with um, Bountiful on the field. So, if you know that you're going to get the Bountiful, you have it's this. Like, you it's just a straight away, just get rid of it. Um, and also, you can do it when they search cards, so it has multiple uses. But Drastic Drop Off was just insane all the weekend. Another card that saved my skin more times than I can count. Three Quaking Mirror Force. I originally was going to take this out or put it to two, and I was like, I need some more defense. I didn't like any of the other count, uh, any of the other Mirror Forces, and um, Drowning Mirror Force. I the idea is to keep a presence on board. I need at least one monster. Um, so with the Quaking Mirror Force, I thought, you know, if I go against any uh, like BA, if I go against anything like that, it works out. I went against one BA and I lost, but somehow I Quaking did three times. Would you change it for any other the Mirror Forces? Or nope. just keep that three. That's keep it. it three. Drowning's the next best one, but the fact that, as I said, you want to keep them on board. You could maybe put one in if you want to scare your opponent. Um, I might test that if I do cut down on the Draco engine. But yeah, it's it, it's just it's just amazing card. Again, to throughout the weekend, saw this go off so many times. So, so brilliant. many times. So brilliant. <laughs> um, another broken card. With Ariadne, you do not need to pay the cost. So, one Monarch player, I hit his Stormforth and he cried. Um, <laughs> with, who else? I, it, this card was just amazing. It, it just hits so many different cards. I have a third in the side, which you'll see. Because you use it against Monarchs, and you basically win if you can resolve it against one of their big plays. Um, so, if you use it against the Pantheism, anything like that, it's just, it's just game over. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. And then finally, pretty obvious, Chaos Trap Holes, Monarchs, uh, anything uh, is just too good. Keep it at two? Uh, keep it at two main, side the other. Um, we're going to the side deck. So, the side deck again was built on the Friday night. Two Banisher, same thing as Fossil Diner, as I said on the stream. Um, Fossil Diner hits certain decks, this hits certain decks. The only deck this hits at both times is Cosmo. Um, at that point, I side out some Bountifuls just so I don't have too many, um, too many normals with Card of Demise. Card is insane. Against the last round, I opened up this um, Masquerade Strict, uh, 
Quaking Mirror Force, Ariadne, and Drastic Drop Off against Monarchs, game three. So I instantly dropped off his Adir, and then I just went off from there, and he just couldn't stop it. So this card just, if you set up, it wins against Monarchs, it wins against Cosmo, it wins against so many decks. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love it. I'd probably keep it at two, just because three will clog. Raigeki sided. Um, it was a bit of a weird one. I wanted to add Raigeki, but I didn't have space in the main. So if I take out the Draco engines, this is going to go in. Um, but yeah, I sided in a few times and it won me one game. Shout out to Michael for the prohibitions. Uh, my guy. So this card, I just like the idea of prohibition. Being able to call something that my opponent has allows me to um, play a little bit better in the fact that I can. Uh, don't have to worry about it. I, yeah, I protected a lot of my resources, so I would call the Twin Twister, um, or sometimes, <laughs> it's a bit dirty, a Prohibition something else, and Twin Twister, and I had the Curse Seal. So I wanted him, I wanted him to think I was misplaying, um, and, or just, no way in hell we have the Twin Twister, and, but I had the Curse Seal. That's only time do that. Otherwise, Prohibition that Twin Twister. Um, Prohibition was just so good. In the uh, stream, I called the uh, Pantheism simply because he had them to engrave and you can't use them. So it, I just stopped his whole draw engine and at that point I had the Curse Seal if he had Twin Twister, Stormforth, anything like that. So this card is just so good. I don't think I would actually keep it, I don't think I would actually move it to the main because it's just a bit weird like that. You need to know what you're playing against properly and I see think, what they're doing. I think it's decent against with any demise builder. But it, it's, it's, it's just decent against any deck. Um, so yeah, I probably would never change them. Um, and I've been putting stuff on top of my deck, haven't I? Um, so yeah, so that was, that was awesome. Uh, three MST, again, Twin Twister's bad in this deck because you want to keep cards in your hand, so MST works. Um, only sided them in against Klee Demise and a hit the scout when he paid, so yeah, it was good. Um, the one ofs again, don't really say too much, I'm just stocking up on them. Cosmo, Monarchs, and Monarchs, and anything else I feel like I can destroy their spell cards. Um, huge revolution is over, never used it. Idea was that I wanted to just protect myself with the Twin Twisters, never used it, I'm gonna cut it. Never used it, never really wanted to. It's kind of really just a dead. I play, basically played with 14 side deck cards because I never used it. Um, and then finally, the most disgusting one probably is just this. You have to play this, this format, because Monarchs, both Domain and Ixi variants are brutal. There's so I got beat by Domain Monarch in the top 64 um, because he had the answer to this. He twin twisted this, so uh, yeah, that was basically it. Um, but yeah, so that's the, um, that is the side deck. Pointless extra deck that I never went into not at once. all. Not once. I considered it on stream. That's it. These are these are cards that you can run. You can you can put fusions in. You can do what you want. I considered this once, and that was it. And honestly, you don't need a side deck. And you don't need an extra deck to play this. But if you're in like a clutch like position, it's probably a good idea to have it. On stream, I was thinking he had two pump, he had two um, primes, and I was like, I should probably exceed. And then I'm like. Oh no way, they're in attack mode. Attack, attack, just leave it. Um, so yeah, these these are just pointless cards. If you want to have a nice expensive extra deck, do it. Um, so, but honestly, I'd never use it. So right, finishing 7-3, what was your hardest matchup? Hardest matchup was, ironically, Chain Beat. Round three, I played Chain Beat, and it was such a close match. It was 2-1 to me, just because he, he simply just, like me, slow game, had loads of answers. Um, the only reason I properly won was because Prohibition. In game two, I got Prohibition and called Wind Up Rabbit, and he had two in hand. Um, and then game three, I Prohibitioned Wind Up Rabbit again, and he just couldn't recover from that. Every time I, I every time he tried to activate Thunderbird, I'd strike it, um, so he just couldn't actually gain any momentum. Um, so that was just the hardest one. The easiest one was Pepe. Round two, Pepe. Um, it was I two owed in ten minutes because I just threw the nuts and stopped him. I won the dice roll um, and just basically won every game that I won the dice roll. I won. And every game I lost, I didn't win the dice roll. So there's something strange about yeah. that. Um, and no, I didn't open up Demise all of those games either. Uh, but I still got quite close. 
So yeah, that was that was the easiest and hardest matchup. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right. So people come to think. One thing we will say is. You were the only counter fairy deck in the whole of this tournament. Yeah, I know. 523 or Somewhere 8 players. Like that, yeah. It is yeah. in the 520s, all we know. Yeah, so. Only counter fairy deck and representing. Anyone who knows me knows that I love counter fairies. Um, I've loved it since Ariadne was first announced. I've, if you don't know, I've been playing this game since day one. Um, and I love counter fairies. Ariadne is just made me go into a dark room for a bit, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just so good. When we get Ties of Brethren, that's going to be amazing, but by then, Card of Demise will be hit, guaranteed. Um, so, yeah, and also, um, there's, there's a guy who top 8 uh, German Nationals um, running my build as well, um, and it's all because on Pojo, I uh, created the Counter Fairy um, strategy thread, so that's why we all talk about it. So I'm just quite glad that it's getting a bit of recognition. I did well because it's such a sleeper deck. If you don't know what you're doing against it, you're going to lose because you can just bluff out so much stuff. The amount of times people try to bluff me trying to activate a strike or a warning, <laughs> you need to know what deck you're playing against. If you don't know how the deck runs, then you're going to lose. So as much as you need to know this deck, you need to know the meta. So honestly, that's probably the only reason I got that far because I could call my opponent's bluffs and uh, keep all of my keep all of my um, my background live for when they actually had to make plays. So yeah. alright, least of all, least um, any shout outs to anyone? Yeah, shout out to my Michael Larosu. Um Clive Scout Yu-Gi-Oh can go away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this guy's awesome, sub to him. Um, yeah, shout out to Mike. He called the um, prohibitions, he took them, the CP ones out of his blinder, and I was like, no, you don't need to play these. And then we, I was like, Mike, can I have your CPs? And he was like, I'm playing them. So I had to get stuck with the commons. Whoa, whoa, what can you whoa, do? What's this, man? Uh, <laughs> threw me under the no, but in all fairness, Mike got me a lot of cards um, that I needed for the side. Um, shout out to the Brotherhood, everyone who did really well over the course of the tournament. Shout out just to the Brotherhood in general in London. Absolutely love it. And um, if you are in London at the end of August, promo time, make sure to uh, check out the Brotherhood Open that's going to be happening at Strategy Event in uh, Bank Holiday Weekend. It's nice and easy, loads of prizes, street. Gonna be awesome. This guy here. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. I realise it's a very long uh, video, but there's a lot to talk about because you're probably thinking, how the hell did he do that without cheating? Oh, by the way, Royal oh. Decree didn't get flipped on me once all day. <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen? Everyone was like, sided it in. I was like, oh, where is it? Check the bottom. Yeah, it's at the bottom. Where's the other one? <laughs> Second from bottom. Yes! <laughs> yeah, so that's it. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. Thank you for Michael for recording it. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more random videos. Woo.